suffered some, some damage in various locations, primarily in the lighthouse um, area. Um, but before I get into the details of what happened and some of the conditions that we experienced on the island, um, I just want to commend the staff uh, of the job well done that they did um, you know, throughout the time of the event. We actually went into incident command on Friday, um, October 26th. Um, incident command is you know, the, the emergency management plan that we implemented. Uh, we had staff stay the weekend, and they were here pretty much throughout the event until... Who stayed? Uh, I'm just curious. Keith Guerra, um, Alex Snetkov, Santo Berta, um, Cy Opperman, um, most of the engineering... Uh, hi, this is Mark. I'm sorry. I was actually there when you were asking for me, but I accidentally hung up. Okay, all right. Okay, we're on another topic Okay, right if now. you can just we'll give us back. a few minutes, Mark, and, and just sit tight. Sir, I'll mute myself again. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we had um, basically all the public safety, um, the bus operators, um, grounds crew, um, and so on, and the various department heads. So it was, it was a commended effort from, from those that were both here and also um, working from home. Um, as I said, the islands um, experienced damage mostly at the lighthouse area. Uh, we had, because of the storm surge, uh, significant flooding um, at various locations, uh, including the observation deck. We had the surge cause flooding of three to five feet of water. Um, at Lighthouse Park, we had damage to our light poles. Um, and the, the land bridges that we had, the pedestrian bridges, were washed away. We had 21 trees that were lost throughout the island. Uh, we so had. Was there any specific spot or where most of them were, or was this just random? Just all around. Yeah, just throughout the island. Um, the the steam tunnel was flooded uh, on the north side of the, of, um, of the steam plant. So right now we don't have any heating um, for our facilities as well as Cola Hospital. Uh, speaking of Cola Hospital. The, the basement of Cola Hospital completely flooded. And they Sorry, were, can I have a human closer to the microphone? You're fading out. Thank you. You're, it's at the middle of the table, but I can't like lean over too much, but they're going to move the, the telecom. So I, I was saying that Cola Hospital's basement was completely flooded. They had to evacuate um, several wait, of the... Wait, wait, wait. You either shout if it was there <laughs> or talk in a regular voice. <laughs> <down there. laughs> okay, thank you, David. So um, the basement of Cola Hospital was completely flooded. They had to evacuate a um, significant number of the critical patients, but they still had 500 patients um, on site. We assisted the hospital um, with, with um, uh, emergency fuel they needed to operate their generators in order to pump out the, the basement. Um, the hospital, I visited this, the hospital um, during this, the hurricane, and they were um, basically blacked out. They, they had very little lighting and no heat. Um, so it was, it was a significant condition for them, but things are coming back to normal. Um, we had damage to the seawall um, at various locations, but again, primarily Lighthouse Park. That's a low-lying area that we have. It's actually, I think, in flood zone A or B. Um, Any damage that's bad enough that we should have any immediate concerns? Um, at Lighthouse. At Lighthouse, the seawall, um, the land bridge. We've actually have Lighthouse still closed, Lighthouse Park completely closed until we can get to. It's not safe for people to walk over there. Speaking of not walking over there, one of the things that we stress to folks in our advisories and so on, people still took it upon themselves to go and be adventurous. Is they <coughs> during the storm and, and and they went up to Lighthouse and and literally we had to send public safety out there to bring them back. Mm -hmm. It was and we don't. One of our public safety officers actually fell and almost landed in the East River. So it it, it was just people again were being silly. Um, I saw a but picture we, on the blog that showed a guy in water up to his waist. Right. There, and I thought, right. He doesn't have to be there like in, in Coney Island to get to his house. Why is he not a first responder? Right. Exactly. Why is he putting our people at risk? Right. Sure. Absolutely. But luckily so for us, we didn't have any loss of life, uh, and no one was injured. Um, either on staff or, or any of the residents. Um, <clears throat> the Goldwater site didn't sustain any damage and neither did the FDR site. Um, there were no loss of trees, um, no damage to um, the granite or anything like that. We actually had a lot of 
debris washed up onto the riprap throughout the island. Um, and, you know, that's, that's basically it. We're in the process right now of documenting everything um, so we can get a reimbursement. We don't know how much, actually, I think you submitted a budget to Albany, right? Yeah. In terms of how much was that? I can't remember. Um, we estimated a, a number. Well, in repairs, it was a couple hundred thousand, and then mitigation, possibly uh, right. upgrading the pier to a better head. Right. right. And then, but that doesn't include the seawall damage at Lighthouse? No, it includes seawall. Oh, seawall? Okay, yeah. great. So, all of this will be submitted to FEMA for reimbursement, as we did with Hurricane Irene. How long have you been talking about this? It's going to be tough. Um, there's a lot of, I mean, we have to... If you can't walk on it, the uh, the bridges are gone. Those wooden bridges are gone. They're completely washed away. It's so, dry out. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it has to dry out. Um, we had the trees inspected and so on, and some of the trees have to go. Right. Temporary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We have to That's lose the trees. That's where we can move the fence. <laughs> 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 We're actually ordering a temporary fence. Yeah, I know where there's a closer. Just, just, just the correct way. <laughs> <laughs> But we're gonna probably even if, if we can restore, even if we can restore the the land bridge, uh, we have the park closed because we have to do the electrical work that um, the board approved from Hurricane Irene. So that's gonna be controlled by the electrical contractor because we're gonna have a lot of things going on over there. So it may be for an extended time. How long? I'm not sure. My uh, reason, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one, but I verbalized my insistence to try to be on the agenda for this meeting is that uh, as I looked around various pictures and reports on where exactly we took water mm -hmm. uh, and what the consequences were, it occurred to me that it wouldn't cost a tremendous amount of money <coughs> to essentially waterproof this island, sandy-proof this island. I believe that, uh, I'm not saying waterproof, because maybe a bigger storm sometimes, you can't keep putting your walls up and up, but a two-foot knee wall kept the water out of, I noticed you didn't report on the fact that about a third of Eastwood lost its power. I'm oh, sorry, yes. Where I live, including my as, house. As well as Octagon. Not that I felt, not and that I feel like there's a big tragedy. And Blue Wing Boss. Uh, right, Blue Wing. Mm -hmm. um, it had to do with water coming just over the seawall and off to get into, I think, basements in almost mm -hmm. every case. Certainly that was the case with the Kohler. And that was the case center. with the uh, Eastwood. A two-foot knee wall on top, this is just me talking, mm -hmm. you know, like, I'm Frank's not here, so I got to be the expert on everything. Would have kept all of that water off the rock. It would have kept it in the river. It might have, we would have splash over. Uh, I'm not surprised that Oct that uh, uh, lighthouse flooded because lighthouse has flooded several times in my years here. Uh, and that there, the seawall itself is lower in that area. And so and with that big fetch coming from the north, you know, when the storm was coming from the north, it's actually coming from the north. Mm -hmm. Water, a lot of water gets blown in there. That's going to take a total redesign to figure out how to keep that place and Kohler's basement dry in the future. But a, a, a reasonably modest seawall, and since uh, uh, Alex has been talking about redoing the fences anyway around the island. Uh, the railings. Huh? The railings. The railings. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think it makes sense to, to design, you know, like two feet of knee wall and then a, a shorter railing on the top, you know, near the top of the rail where, where, where it is right now. With it. And I think it's time to start thinking about that seriously, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking it's time to start looking for money for that seriously, <coughs> although I think we might be able to afford it. I don't know. I mean, over the course of the next few years. I know we have, no, I know we have a couple million dollars. Uh, That's what I say. We might be able to afford it based on our knee wall. Budget. Yeah, we'd add some. But, but it calls for a, a serious design, architecting, mm -hmm. engineering, stuff like that. And I have to drill down into the existing seawall to to link the seawall into the existing, those are not actually seawalls, but they're, they're bulkheads, into the existing bulkhead. And we just call them seawalls by convention, bulkheads. Uh, and it's time seriously to start thinking about this stuff. And, I, you know, I don't know how to make this happen right now. Staff has a lot of stuff going on right now. But uh, uh, I think that we could have kept that water out if we had the foresight. Well, this is hindsight talking you know, it's hindsight. But I look at the actual situation on the ground. And, uh, that would have worked. And if we're going to get a, if we're going to get a hundred-year storm every 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 once a year, every two years, 
Yeah. No, it, it's the prudent thing to do. I mean, I was really walking around the island today, and the water level is just really high. So if we were to have a storm now, <coughs> we would experience the same thing that we experienced well, a there. hurricane, yeah. But on the other hand, the, the nor'easter didn't come ashore. Did it come ashore up in, in Lighthouse Park? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, we were used to storms. I mean, mm -hmm. We base our judgment on nor'easters, which are big and blizzards, which are big heavy storms. You see. But now, uh, the, all the predictions, well, I, you know, since the Republicans lost, there will be global warming, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna, yeah, I know the tape is running. Posterity. 10,000 years from now, when they come back to see that Stonehenge from the south end of the island, they're also going to check the tape for the things. So. <laughs> Uh, okay. In any case, that's my point. That was that was the point that I wanted to raise. You can I, 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 just well, I know with the Hurricane no, Irene, and we had already discussed that something was going to be done at the. Um, we discussed it. Yeah, we, it was discussed. That's where I stopped talking because I didn't want to say anything about it. Well, no, but that's a good idea. I mean, we have to replace the railings anyway, so if you're going to replace them with something that, that will fix this, let's, let's get on it. Sure um, the other thing, would it make sense to have any kind of I'm going to call it a shelter or a refuge for the people who lost electricity. We had talked about that a long time ago, and we were told there were two places here that the church had some, that the child school had a generator, and they could use the gym if we needed to, uh, and that the, church, the uh, sports park would be another option. And everybody kind of decided that shelter in place is the right thing to do, and nobody's going to leave their house. But with the electric going out, I'm not so sure that is the right thing to do anymore. There's a generator that can heat a building. And people can't live in their apartments because they're so cold. It, you don't have to go off the island to warm them up. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to have to send them over to um, to Queens if we can do something. Could we have done that if we wanted to? Um, if, if we would have had, because there are certain things that need to be, you need to be approved as a shelter and so on. There are a lot of liability issues and so on and that we have to take into consideration. That's something that I... We had a post-Hurricane um, Sandy meeting internally, uh, and there's certain things that we learned from Irene and then that we implemented with Sandy. Now the things that we learned from Sandy that we're going to implement for the future. Um, and that's something that we need to consider as well um, in terms of shelters. And we can talk to OEM and the city agencies. OEM, OEM is going to tell us we have shelters in the Queen if we went through that. I know. Um, I but, but I think what can we do on our own with their insurance? May I ask Matt a question? Yes. Matt. In the blackout, people couldn't get up to their apartment. People couldn't do anything. You know, given the no air conditioning, I was off the island at the time of the blackout. I was working somebody as a security officer. But I know you led the charge. You and other agencies on the island led the charge. I was off the island too. Well, someone was I taking am, care of people. Who do you I think it was. Um, um, can I ask you a question? Yes. Tomorrow? Well, how, how did that all get organized? They went to church. We all just came out in the street and got organized. Yeah. Cookie, Cookie yes. Bugo started a barbecue with everybody's food. They said, come on down, it was going to spoil. And they were cooking for everybody. And it all we all took the, the basement of the church because there was no blood or anything. Right. So it was very, very hot. So people and then people it. went to each person's house, make sure anybody who was stuck upstairs, that they, you know, they went yeah. knock on the door. They, all the, all the, the housing companies had the names of anybody who had any kind of mm -hmm. the disabled and everything. So we just kind of did it ourselves. Were the housing companies at the meeting? No, um, they, they were not. The, the meetings that we had were internal, but that's something that we need to okay. think uh, about for the future. In, in another role, I'm chief of the cert team, and we have members from various buildings. Mm -hmm. So instead of having the general population providing mm -hmm. input for this sort of thing, mm -hmm. we could have the housing companies, the cert team, uh, REOC, uh, both with the engineering and transportation, mm -hmm. but also public safety, get together to just discuss what were the issues, what would be desirable. And as far as, you know, you know it, it, after, after the incident and the electric power is out in the building, of course everyone's waiting for the power to come back right mm -hmm. away, but it doesn't. And so just as we have cooling centers that are created uh, less formally than an evacuation center during the summer, you know, the senior centers are now school cooling centers. Mm -hmm. Maybe something can be done that way to provide temporary shelter for hours or right. many hours even. And, and, and again, <coughs> I think the conservative thing to do, I, I understand the need to, to provide this type of service and, and facility to the island residents who need it. 
Uh, but I think we need to explore it because now we're talking about housing people, and I think that just opens up a you know different you know criteria. Uh, but I don't think we're really talking. I mean, we're not having a place where people are going to move out of their apartment into our place for a couple months. We're talking. It's freezing. You got to get into something warm. You can sit on the bleachers, mm -hmm. bring your blanket, do whatever. And OEM is not going to do that for us. Is there Maybe any we could look at a generator for uh, the community center and the church. Yeah, or sports park. That seems or like a big sports place. park. Well, sports yeah. park. I the problem this time is it's been less heated. Yeah, but if we had a generator, then we'd be okay. Well, they would have power. Right. Well, couldn't the well, power you, get? Now you're you discussing know. specifics. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Your basic right. Anyway, we'll right on. Yeah. yeah, we need to get something. Well, we can we can look into that. And the we has got to be pretty inclusive because yes. whose lives are we talking about? Or, I mean, you, you, you have to represent the, the other fifteen thousand. That we better be pretty inclusive. I know there's been a lot of public talk about do something. I guess it devolves onto Riox to be the chief doer or the lead doer, but it's you know we've got we've got a couple of dollars worth of property involved. Uh, I, I don't want I don't want anybody's kids to be cold in the dark. You know, for a couple of nights like happened. My my power came back on less than 24 hours. I was so depressed facing the possibility of a second night without power. Just me. Mm -hmm children crying, and I don't want to create a sob story, but it uh, must have been terrible. Yeah, my family's in the Rockaways, so I know yeah. they're terrible yeah. now. I was going to ask you about that, yeah. seriously. Yeah, yeah. 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 but it's bad out there, and it's still bad. Yeah. Um, and we're not going to get you know, FEMA and Red Cross and everybody else if we have to do that here. we got to do it ourselves, like they're all doing down there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I turned to, I'm sorry, but uh, I, met, I remember Matt talking about it, but I should have yeah. just asked you. Well, you know, there was a, a, a series of meetings that we had right. back then that Mike Morio had put together, which included resident um, managers, um, Rear Rioc, OEM, SEMO, everybody, uh, fire, police, uh, and I thought those were really good meetings. Um, I don't know if they need to be as inclusive, but if those could be um, considered just for planning on a quarterly basis, which is what we were doing at that time, that might be very useful. Two hurricanes later, and the powers that be have uh, are, are looking at the stuff with a sharper eye, and that's why yeah. Office of Emergency, whatever, you know, they have to let us set up a housing place, shelter, mm -hmm. and, uh, insurance, blah, blah, blah. But on an ad hoc basis, when you got cold people, you've got to find some place for them. Okay. All right, so that's what we'll do. We're going to, I mean, we set up. I mean, let's not find reasons not to do it. Let's right. find reasons to do it. Roosevelt Island's real good at reasons not to do it. Um, why don't we stick the FDNY and go to smart parking if we have somebody on the line? Sure. Mark? Yeah.